Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrea and today we are doing a first impressions on the new NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. This product is in addition to their Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This product is a favorite of mine, as you can see. I have like three of these and I think all of them I've hit pan on. Uh, this is just my summer shade. So we're gonna do a wear test in this. I apologize if you can hear somebody weed eating outside. It's almost 2 p.m. and I want to be able to wear this for a full eight hours for y'all so that we can see how long it lasts. So if you hear that, I apologize. So let's discuss some of the claims of the foundation. It says it's a 16 hour wear, oxidation resistant, which I tried this on last night and I was playing with it on my hand and kind of mixing in my green color corrector it's something that I do with most of my foundations and I don't think that this is oxidation resistant but we'll see how it looks on the face. So it says that it balances out oil while maintaining a hydrated skin-like finish. It protects from pollution and blue light which is kind of awesome. It's full coverage matte and it's for normal dry combination and oily skin types. And it does have microalgae and hyaluronic acid in it. And it says to help absorb excess sebum. I love hyaluronic acid, so I'm down for it being in any of my products. It also says it's transfer resistant and sweat proof. And that it has unique oil absorbing powders to create a smooth second skin finish. So I just want to show you guys in comparison to my uh, other NARS foundation. This is the Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation that I have the same color in these and they're both in shade Vienna light 4.5. I just wanna show you that the colors are spot on. They don't look spot on on my hand, but I applied them to my face yesterday, side by side, one on each cheek, and they look exactly the same. So this is the Natural Radiant Longwear and this is the new Soft Matte. So I've already primed my skin with two of my normal primers that I use, the MAC Strobe Cream and then the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. I use these all the time so I know that I love them and I just can't do without at least a hydrating primer, especially since this is a matte foundation. I typically go for more natural finish or dewy foundations nowadays. My skin is more on the dry side. Um, I do get a little bit oily in my T-zone throughout the day, hence the poreless putty primer. And I also have large pores on my nose and around the sides. So this is in my T-zone, this is all over the face. And I wanted to test this out how I would normally wear it. So I'm gonna apply this in a couple of different ways. NARS foundations are always meant to be applied with your fingertips. That's how they create them. Every single foundation that they have is meant to be applied that way. Obviously, you can apply them with whatever tool you want. So I'm going to apply part of this with my fingers. And then I'm also going to use my Tati Blendiful because this is my favorite way to apply foundation. And then I'm also going to use a brush like on my forehead or something so we can just see what that looks like. When I was kind of testing this out yesterday, I was using this brush. This is the, oh, it's completely rubbed off. This is an uh, It Cosmetics brush for Ulta, <clears throat> and it's just a flat top kabuki. So I'm also going to use NARS concealers with this. NARS does make two of my favorite concealers of all time. The Radiant Creamy Concealer is a favorite. I've got this in like three shades. I also have this in like three shades. Uh, and as you can see, this one is scraping at the edges. I've been through at least three or four of these previously. So we're gonna use the Radiant Creamy Concealer under the eyes and then the Soft Matte Complete Concealer um, anywhere on the face to cover blemishes and stuff like that. One thing I will say that I've noticed when applying this, I feel like it kind of comes out of the tube quickly, at least when you first open it and it gets a little messy. So just a little note there. This does go a very long way. I probably put too much product on the back of my hand, but you can see how runny that is. 
So I'm going to use my fingers first and I'm just going to dot this. I think I applied too much. <laughs> the reason that they say to apply this with your fingers is because the heat from your fingers warms up the product and melts it into the skin. I do have the NARS uh, tinted moisturizer and I always apply it with my fingers. But their other foundation I usually apply with a brush. Wow, okay. So already I'm not liking this as much with my fingers as I did with a brush yesterday. I feel like it's catching on to a bunch of my dry spots which is kind of all over right now. I'm gonna go over this with a brush and see what it looks like. Still not looking very good. Okay, let's, let's try a little bit with the brush on the forehead. A very tiny bit of this goes a very long way, just FYI. I wonder if this is the primers that I've been using with this because it is not looking great here either. Let's try this side with my Tati Beauty sponge. I did have a little bit of a sunburn on my nose, so I do have some peeling there. It actually, it's looking fine on my nose. Okay. Things are looking better on this side. Let me, oh my God, it's getting worse. I truly don't know what to do at this point. Like, I kind of want to wipe it off and take off these primers and start again. Honestly, I think I am going to do that. <laughs> I've never had to do this before, but maybe the pore filling primer was a bad idea with this. So let me go take this off and I'm going to come back. Okay, and I'm back. That did not go well. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if it was my skincare or the primers or the application. So I took that off with some Bioderma and then I just reapplied my skincare. When I first applied my skincare this morning, I did use a lot of oil. And so this time I cut that down like a ton and used mostly moisturizer. I'm not gonna apply any primers. When I applied this yesterday, just testing, I was actually testing the color that I bought just to see if it was too light and it was, so I had to go in the store and exchange it for um, a different color. When I applied this yesterday, I just threw on some moisturizer. I hadn't done like any of my skincare routine yesterday and I just threw it on top with this Kabuki brush. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to throw this on with this brush and see if that applies better. I'm not going to use any primers. I keep a Neutrogena moisturizer at my vanity just for like emergency uses so I don't have to get up and go to my bathroom. That's not what I typically use on a regular basis. That moisturizer does have dimethicone in it, which is why I stopped using it. But that may be why it looked good yesterday, because the one, the moisturizer I normally use does not have dimethicone in it. And that's typically what's in a smoothing primer, like this e.l.f. one. I don't have the ingredients to this, so let's try this again. I'm a little scared now. I thought that I was going to love this foundation. Yesterday, I did apply a really thin layer of this and then went back on top with another thin layer to get a full coverage. So maybe I need to be doing that today as well. So I just put some on the back of my hand and I'm going to dip the brush in. Okay, things are already looking better on my cheek. 
I'm not seeing it look funky in my pores. It is looking a little weird on my nose though, just from having dry spots there. So I am getting like a weird spot right here. Let me see, zoom you in. I don't know if you can see this right here. It's getting a little bit patchy. But everywhere else it's looking pretty good. It is looking kind of dry right here in the center of my forehead as well. That doesn't normally happen to me either. I'm gonna see if using my finger fixes this. I truly don't know what's going on here in this spot. It looks like it fixed it in some places, but then it's lifting in other places. When I put this on yesterday, I was able to layer it fine without lifting it up underneath. I don't know what's going on today. I'm just using my finger to kind of touch up some spots and see how it goes. So that did make my nose look better. So this is pretty full coverage, but I don't think it's like 100% full coverage right now. I'm gonna add a little bit of a layer to see if I can build this up anymore. And I'm not taking a lot, just a, just a tiny bit. I'm just gonna pat it on. That does look really nice. I'm just, oops. Adding more to my trouble areas on my cheeks. That did build nicely in both places. So it looks like it did cover up most of my acne and my blemish marks from previous acne. After I went over that again, this does look better. So, so far I'm digging this without primers. My pores right here on the sides of my nose do look a tiny bit emphasized. I'll have to try this foundation out with like the Tatcha liquid silk canvas and some other pore filling primers. I also like the milk makeup blur stick. So I'll have to test that out some more and see if I enjoy those since that elf one did not go well with this foundation, which I have never had a problem. I don't think with that elf primer not going with a foundation. So that to me tells me that this foundation is a little bit finicky. So now I'm gonna go in with the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I'm gonna put that on my under eyes. This is the shade Light 2.5 Creme Brulee. And I'm just using a My Kitco 0 0.13 My Domed Multi. I definitely would not swipe when you're putting concealer on top of this foundation because it moves it. Like, use stippling padding motions. I don't normally have issues with this area when it comes to foundation and concealer application. Sometimes if I am blending my highlighter in too much in that spot, it will get a little bit um, patchy, like lifted, but I've never had this much issue like upon our first application. So now I'm going to go in with the Soft Matte Complete Concealer in the shade Medium One Custard. And I'm just going to spot conceal a little bit on my face where I think I need a little more coverage, which is not very much. I feel like this foundation has covered a lot. This is my go-to concealer for covering blemishes. It covers like everything. So I am gonna take a smidge of this on my nose as well. We're going for like the fullest of full coverage today. 
So when I first applied this foundation yesterday, I didn't really have anything on underneath it and my skin looked a little flat. And today applying it on top of my skincare, it still looks a little radiant, which I'm loving. That is the kind of look that I am looking for. I like a, a natural matte finish and this is, this is looking really good. I feel like this is starting to sink into my skin really well and things are looking better. Let me zoom you in again. I'll give you a close up of what my skin looks like. No redness peeking through at all. So I'm gonna finish off my face and I'll come back and show you guys what everything looks like. It's 2.30 right now. 2.34. I can't show you on my phone because I record on my phone. Um, so I'm going to say that we applied this around 2.15. After I finish all of my cheek products, I'll come back on and powder with y'all. And then I'll do some check-ins throughout the day so you can see what this looks like. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So for bronzer, I just applied my Cover FX Bronzing Duo in Sunkissed Bronze. For blush, I tried this e.l.f. one for the first time, just this side, and it's called Watermelon. And then for highlighter, I used my Hourglass palette, and I used all three shades mixed together. That's my favorite way to use this palette. It's the Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. This was limited edition for Christmas, I think, one year. And then they brought it back recently. I don't, I feel like this here? I don't know if this is still in, available or not. I apologize if it's not. <laughs> but if it is still available, get it, because it is blinding. Hello? Okay. So I am actually feeling a little bit dry. My skin doesn't look super dry, but I do feel like I look a little bit textured. I was going to use my Anastasia powder because this is one of my current favorites. It's very blurring, which I love about it, but since I'm feeling so dry, I'm actually going to use my Hourglass Veil powder on top of this. This powder is great for setting things without it looking powdery or cakey. I typically use this powder more in the winter time when my skin is super dry. We're just not quite there yet in Texas. <laughs> I know some people are starting to get snow. My brother and his wife live in Montana and they just posted a picture of snow on the ground, so. Okay, so I'm going in with a little bit of that on my Wayne Goss brush. And I'm just gonna lightly set just my T-zone. I feel like far away this looks really good, but up close my skin looks not great. And it may just take some playing around with it. That does look a little bit better. I actually am going to spray my face with some Fix Plus too. I just really feel like I need some hydration. It's just the regular MAC Fix Plus. Okay, I definitely think that already looks better. Um, I'm not looking as dry. So let me zoom you back in. So this is what my skin is looking like. It is 3.05 now. So I'll check back in with y'all in a couple of hours and let you know how it's wearing. I am in front of a huge window right now, so this is natural lighting. This is what it looks like in natural light. And I have no lights on, no ring lights or anything. So I'll check back in with y'all in a little bit. Hey y'all, we're back for a check-in. 
So it is almost 5.30, so I've had this on for a little bit over three hours. It looks like my cheeks and my forehead are looking pretty good. All I've been doing is really filming. I haven't done any strenuous activities or anything. I am noticing some breaking up right here on the side of my chin. And a little on this side as well. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this happens sometimes to me when I think things don't blend well together. I think that the oil that I mixed in potentially, I don't remember this foundation saying it's oil free. So I don't see anywhere that says specifically that this is oil free, but I just looked at the ingredients and I'm not seeing any oils in there. I'm going to assume that this is oil free and that the oils in my skincare is what's causing this. But you can almost see like little dots at where it's separating. It's happening right here as well. Other than that, everything looks good. This is disappointing. I guess I'm gonna have to test this out multiple times and with different products and see what works well with it. All right, I'll come back and check in with you guys in a little bit. Hey y'all, I'm back. It is 10.30 exactly. It's time for my final check-in. I've had this on for a little bit over eight hours now. So since you've last seen me, I have cooked dinner. I took our dogs for a 45 minute walk outside in the Texas humidity. <laughs> it wasn't as hot today because we're getting a storm tonight. So it's been in like the low 90s, uh, high 80s today. So the problem area I had on my chin has gotten significantly worse. So. I am quite oily, but all in here, not only is the foundation cracking in my lines, but it's also like separating, splotching apart. And it's decent doing it all on this side as well. And then my cheeks and my forehead look fantastic. It is coming off on my nose a little bit right here. That's to be expected for me personally. I have allergies, so I'm usually blowing my nose quite often. So other than these two areas, everything actually looks really good. There is a little bit of gathering around my nose right here. I did get a little bit dewy. That might partially be from the MAC Fix Plus. I love MAC Fix Plus, but I love it because it makes me a little bit dewy. It makes things a little bit more l melted together, especially when something is looking quite powdery on me. But I'm not offended by the amount of oil on my face right now. I'm just this, like, I would not go out in public like this. Let's blot and see if we can fix this. I'm gonna use the uh, Fenty blotting papers. Is that satisfying or gross? It just like sticks to your face. So that's normally where I get oily. Everything else is pretty much highlight. I'm gonna see if I can tap over this with my finger a little bit. So that does look better. I still don't love the way this looks right here. That was a lot of work for a touch up for me. I don't feel like normally I have to put that much effort in. I'm curious if this is happening because of my skincare, the oil that I use. I'm gonna have to try this without using an oil on my face, 
which kind of sucks because I love using my oil in the morning, but everywhere, literally everywhere on my face, besides right here, it has held up so well. My blush, bronzer, and highlighter, like look how poppin' my highlighter is. That's like how it was when I first applied it. Everything else looks so, so good. One of the reasons I was able to pat that out is because I used the hourglass powder. The hourglass powder is so finely milled and so thin that once your oils have kind of seeped through, it's almost like you never powdered. I don't know how else to explain it besides that, but that powder is completely different than any other powder I've ever used. I don't think I would have been able to do that with other powders. I'm definitely going to have to wear this several more times with different primers and apparently moisturizers and kind of see how that works for my skin. And I'll have to update you guys with how I feel about it later on. I'm a little disappointed that this is happening. I had super high hopes for this foundation. I will say in person, my skin looks pretty good, but I have felt like a little textured today, like more textured than I normally do. I feel like my skin has actually pretty good texture on a normal day. Um, I use a uh, glycolic acid on a pretty regular basis and that keeps my skin usually pretty smooth. I still have pores, like everybody has pores, but for some reason I just feel a little heavy today. So I think that's partially the foundation as well. I don't know. I'm going to have to test some more things out. On another note, the claims of this foundation were transfer proof and sweat proof. That's not true. <laughs> I sweat pretty badly in my hairline when I work out. And after my walk, I had some sweat dripping over here on the side. So I took a tissue and like padded so that it wouldn't like run down my makeup. And I got transferring from blotting with a tissue. So to me, this is not transfer proof and sweat proof. It's transfer proof in a sense like if I touch my face, it doesn't feel sticky, but I would still just be careful with that claim. <laughs> um, if you're gonna be working out with this foundation on, I don't necessarily recommend working out with makeup on. I don't normally do that, but wear tests for videos. That's, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this foundation below. Are you interested in it? Do you want to pick it up? Are you disappointed by how it wore on my skin? <laughs> I am. I am disappointed. I had such high hopes. I love NARS too. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps me out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Bye. And it's in addition to their Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This product is super hyped up and well loved by me. Kai, are we really starting this already, baby? I literally just started filming. My freaking brows will not stay in place. Oh my God, will you fucking stop? They're literally right next to me. And now they're mowing. It's supposed to rain today too. Like, I can't really be mad. My next door neighbors are really old people and they're super cute. And it's their daughter that comes over here and does all the yard work for them. It's so cute, but it's just really bad timing <laughs> for me.